Hello there and welcome back to the studio today. So we are still in the underpainting stage with this larger portrait painting that uh, we're working on. So this is the same day for me as uh, you know when I started this painting. Um, so what I did was I split up the, um, the underpainting into two videos just so it's not too much, uh, too much footage. So for today we're going to cover the rest of these light shapes. Uh, with the the underpainting, I already have the color value, color value, the value web. Since there's not much color except for burnt umber and titanium white, um, we're going to continue to build onto the underpainting and focus in particular on the hands. That being said, here is an image of our model. Morgan and I'm going to keep a picture of her to the top left corner of your screen so you can refer to it as the painting develops. And so the value web is still on here. This is the brush that we use to charge up the palette. So what I have is just three brushes or three or more brushes that I'm using. Now I'm going to be closing up the value range meaning I'm, I'm going to be applying the entire value spectrum just keep in mind that burnt umber is not as dark as ultramarine blue or ivory black so when we do get into color we'll have yet another set of values that we can choose from so again this is just titanium white this is burnt umber both are Winsor and Newton brand here is our value web that we have been using for the underpainting and our medium of choice is a fast drawing medium uh, neo McGilpa medium so I'm just gonna get the brushes that I was using. So here they are, just three brushes. Um, maybe I'm going to need to throw in some larger brushes just to cover the shoulder, but that's kind of how I'm going to keep organizing the brushes. So light, light, middle tone, and then dark, dark. So I'm just going to mix up the light, light, and I have three larger brushes now actually. And if you want to know exactly what materials I'm using, you can scroll down to the description box down below, and I'll have all that information typed up for you. Okay, so now let's see, let's look at the, the neck sh and shoulder. So I'm gonna show you how I approach uh, you know, blocking in these values. I won't show the entire thing just because this is a larger painting. The underpainting will take me a long, a long time. So rather than fill up, you know, the daily episodes with like hours and hours of footage, I'm going to edit it so that I show you the most uh, valuable information. And remember, um, this is a technique, like I mentioned in the beginning of this uh, painting, this is a technique that I will be, uh, it's a classical approach, right? But I'm going to be uh, solidifying the steps into a, a very simple kind of, uh, you know, like a procedural thing. So that being said, I'm going to call this technique the uh, uh, call it Yupari's classical technique so in, we're still in the first stage okay the first stage is the underpainting and each stage is going to have a series of uh, you know smaller uh, sets of things that we're gonna and at this point my camera was actually not in the right spot so I continued to add a few extra value transitions onto the side plane of the neck even though it's off camera here i'm trying to explain it to you in voiceover just so uh, you know you don't lose too much information with my mistake with that camera angle all right so now here we are with the underpainting i just realized i was filming a whole section up here and i had the camera uh focused on the shoulder so yeah sorry about that so i have larger brushes here so i still have a middle tone uh, dark dark and light light brush so this is the middle tone brush this is the light light brush and um, as I mentioned in the start of this painting this is going to be following a technique that I would like to call uh, Yupari's classical technique so this is going to be the classical technique I also want to do some formal writing on this and then create some uh, some more online learning resources uh, I won't say too much about it yet but I do want to create some some more uh, resources so you can self-teach and I think it's going to be important to have you know a, a series of stages uh, that you can follow especially when you're painting something as difficult uh, you know as a, as a human figure or a portrait 
So right now we're blocking in the lighter plane. So let's work on this area here and then I'll just do the forearm on my own. So now with the half tone brush, I'm gonna use a little more of the Neo McGilp. So ideally you want to use less medium in your initial layer. So um, the reason I'm using medium right now is because I want this painting to be dry so I can apply uh, the first color pass or start the first color pass which I'm going to refer to as the local color stage tomorrow. So I want to start that tomorrow. And the painting actually was not dry the next day. So no worries, that just means that we will apply the uh, second stage on a different day. All right, so now with the dark, dark brush, there's a little bit of a shadow over here. Let's make that even darker. Cast shadow over here. And a little bit of light showing on the side here. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and put in, there's a little bit of a back light. So there are actually quite a few light sources in this, um, in this setting. So I'm gonna prioritize this main light, though I am gonna show these reflected lights here. So when you have multiple light sources, um, you don't have to edit it that much. You can paint it as you see it, uh, like I'm doing here, but it's important to you know uh, choose one to prioritize the most. And for me, it's gonna be the light coming from here and not so much the light coming from there. Now with the half tone brush, just fill in the rest of this. And that ought to be enough for that. So I'll go ahead and paint the forearm, um, the forearms on my own, and then um, we'll be back for the hands. All right, now it's time to start to put in some more shapes into the hands. So I'm going to start to close up the forms on the hands. And remember, it, that doesn't mean that I'm going to be finishing, uh, you know, any, any of the shapes. What it means is I'm just going to be using the entire uh, value spectrum that I can get from uh, just titanium white and burnt umber. So we're starting out with this plane here. Um, it's facing the window light. As you can see, there's a little bit of light coming from this direction. There's also light coming from this direction, but it's a little bit odd here because there's less light here. And in fact, the only true light source um, in this direction coming from the main light is this highlight on the thumb. So we're just going to let that be. Um, I'm going to try to group all of these values very, uh, you know, very simply. So that means uh, all of these values here, let's get the middle tone brush. So all of these values here, I'm just gonna group together like this. I'm putting a little bit of a darker accent for the knuckles. That line that I had before was kind of a axis for the, the knuckles themselves. So one there, one here, and one up here. And then the pinky is raised a little bit, so up there. And now I'm gonna get the, um, the dark, dark brush. Put in the dark accents as I see them. One little dark accent here. And over here, backside of the palm of the hand. And the finger goes right over here. And there should be a dark accent and there is underneath of the, the fingers over here and over here, a little bit of a cast shadow. Darker accent here. 
So you can see that we're grouping it light, middle, and then dark, dark. Very simple. A little bit higher up here. Returning to that half tone brush. And I continue to put in this half tone. It's a little bit of a lighter half tone here though. Lighter half tone here, here, now I'm going to switch to the light light brush. So this is pretty much the only light that we have, this uh, highlight and this little light band. The rest is coming from the secondary light source or light sources. So if you recall, do you remember way back when the Steve painting? Um, that one was much more classical, much more of an ideal setting. Um, well, I shouldn't say ideal, but it was easier, okay? Uh, it's easier when you have just a, sim uh, a single light source. So again, with the half tone brush here. Um, so when you have multiple light sources like this, you really have to um, be cautious with your groupings of light and dark. So these accents here are pretty much going to be um, the true shadow. So that shadow, that shadow, that shadow. When I say true shadow, I mean that all of this is in light, coming from the light source, coming from this angle. So theoretically, all of this should be in shadow but there's still light coming from this direction. So that's why I'm saying it's kind of tricky. So if you're a beginner, I would recommend just a single light source. But I don't know, I do like a challenge. And this is definitely a challenge for me. There's a little more light going up here as we approach the knuckles. Half tone brush. You can see how very easily we're going to have the, you know, the illusion of the hands or the hand. But I don't want to fill in too much information for the hands. As long as the shape is correct, you know, you know, I struggle with hands, right? So all the shapes that I'm putting in, I'm hoping that they're correct, but I'm open to uh, having to you know, adjust them in the future. So there's a little bit of the palm showing here. So the, uh, this is a very tricky pose. Uh, so this portion of the palm is foreshortened as you can see here. And that basic shape that we had before uh, I think was pretty good for um, the simplification of form. So always remember that block in, the initial block in. It's important to spend as much time as you're willing to spend on the, the block in. I really have to squint. So remember, squint to see value. Open your eyes to see color. You can even blur your eyes to see color. But squinting definitely helps for value. So with the half tone brush, I'm just gonna go ahead and um, make this little shape darker here. So that's a little bit of a darker half tone, lighter half tone here. I'm gonna have to switch to the dark, dark brush. I think that this finger is getting too wide. Push that in. Go ahead and start to indicate the uh, fingernails. One mark here, there. This one's a little higher, lower. A little bit higher, but not as high as this. This one's much higher. Now with the light, light brush, I have to be careful not to make this light too light, but like I said, um, in the underpainting, you know, it's okay if you make uh, the lights too light. 
because you can always, it's always easier to make them darker later. But after doing that, I'm going to have to revisit this light shape here. And like I said, I'm going to push it lighter. And now with the half tone brush, I'm going to add more subtlety. Meaning I'm just grouping the values closer to one another. So this entire plane change here is uh, it's actually starting to confuse me. Like I said, it's kind of it's kind of a dangerous thing to have the um, multiple light sources. And you know me, you know I struggle with hands. So that's why um, I knew when I was, um, so this is the same day I started this entire painting. So this is the same day for me that I, um, you know, when I started the, uh, the face and then the composition and all that stuff. But I knew I needed like an entire episode dedicated to mostly the hands. Just because hands are so, they're so challenging. More light here. So I think what's going on is there's a little bit of ambiguity uh, for the knuckles. So I think these dark accents, putting them in ought to help a little bit. So if that is the we're following, even the fingers can have a little center line. So where's the knuckle? Like here, doing a little bit of linear construction here. So I think what's bothering me is this. As I blur my eyes, I just think that the, this is just getting too dark. And so we have some natural lighting uh, illuminating the model, and we also have the light coming from the, uh, you know, the light source to the corner over here. Um, but I think since this is prim primarily uh, daylight, I'm going to have to treat it as so, meaning I'm going to have to go ahead and unify all of this. So daylight really compresses the. Uh, the values much more than artificial light. I'm also missing this shape here for the knuckle. And even this is getting too dark. I have to be careful with the arrangement of the values. I heard someone once say um, a drawing is correcting, a drawing is nothing more than correcting your last mistake. So this is kind of in that type of mentality. You know, I don't always have all the answers, but it's important to have a series of steps, and that's why, you know, I'm trying to organize uh, this approach so that it, you know if something goes wrong in the underpainting, I can always come back and uh, have a second chance in the uh, the local color stage. And I always say, when in doubt, blur it out. So there's going to be some really soft edges here for the hands. And you know, this, this plane is facing the light more. So I'm going to push that. And we want to make sure to articulate the, this value here, the shape of the value, so that it appears as though the knuckles are actually here.
and not just some ambiguous shape that I made up. So that should be pretty good for this hand, at least for uh, uh, the underpainting. But remember, in the underpainting, I don't want to do too much. We, uh, we chose certain shapes to uh, to bring into light. So here and here, prioritized, um, you know, this highlight, this highlight, even though I kind of lost this one. But there are two hands here, so we got to move on to the other. So with this hand, I'm going to look for the lightest lights. So in my initial block in, this is where I uh, said that the fingers would end over here. So I think that's still pretty good. Though I might have made this hand too big. I don't know. I, I'll, I'll check it out when we look at the entire picture. But I think that with the hand, I'm going to start off with these lights here. So that's going to be for, that's the pointer finger, middle finger, thumb is going to be over here, just like we did with the, um, with the face. Now we're going to put in the dark darks. Luckily the hand is cropped here, so um, we don't have to paint as much information. Half tone here palms right here. Let's see here. And there's still a little bit more light on the top plane here from the window lighting. So just less pressure. I'm putting in a darker light. Now there's a little bit of an accent here. Remember an accent happens when one form overlaps another form. So that is this finger is overlapping this one, blocking off the light over here. Now we need a little more of a darker accent over here. I gotta envision the hand from the side. It may look strange, uh, well it looks strange to me like this just because the hand is so flattened. You know, it's like resting on the model's leg. And it's also cropped, so I, I have to be mindful of that. Lighter here, not so light here, lighter here. I think that's that's all right for the underpainting for this hand. I'm pretty happy with the placement of the hand there. So maybe a few more adjustments into this one, and I think we'll call it. Pretty tricky with this hand, with these double, uh, this double lighting. Dark, dark brush. I think I'm missing a little half tone here, the side of the wrist, as this plane transitions into this plane. So 
This is the palm, back side of the palm of the hand. I'm missing something with the pinky too, over here. Push this light for the, the knuckle, top plane of the knuckle. All right, I don't want to get into too much of the rendering for the underpainting of the hand. So uh, the important thing is the shape. So we're going to stand back now and reassess the shape. And after standing back, I think the shape for the hand is pretty good. Remember in perspective, the things that are closer to you, um, you know, like if my hand is right here, the things that are closer to you will appear bigger. Not only that, we're also looking up at the model in perspective, and there are multiple light sources going on. So it is a pretty difficult challenge, but it's a challenge that I certainly enjoy. That being said, always remember in a world that can be so negative, be the spark that ignites positivity, amongst all of us. I really hope that you have a wonderful day and I'll be back again with our next episode tomorrow. And here is the painting with the camera as close to front and center as I can possibly get it. So you can see it with the least amount of distortion. Um, I didn't cover all of the canvas just because <laughs> it's a lot to do <laughs> in one day. Um, Anyway, I really hope that you have a wonderful day. I really hope this video helps you out. I'll be back again tomorrow.